The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Now, toll free at 1 927 6648 or internationally at 727 873 7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the wonderful Wednesday, the, D, the December, the February 12th edition of today's Trader's Ed show. I'll figure this out. Uh, don't worry about it. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Road. See, we can persevere through anything. And, you know, part of that perseverance is that we should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. How many people do you know that are just simply prisoners of your past? And when it comes to trading and investing, folks, we cannot be successful if we're going to be prisoners of our past. Our last trade is our last trade. The question is, what's the next trade that is out there? Maybe today we'll go find a few. It would be easier to find them if you give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you're doing some bottom fishing, give us a call. We'll go ahead and take a look at your chart, see what patterns might be setting up there. Of course, if you're top fishing out there looking for a top, we'll go take a look at those patterns as well. Our call number is 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, well, we've got you covered there. You can always send me an email, steve at tfnn com is the uh, email. Please put radio show question in that subject heading, of course, in our Tigers Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, all the indices are in the green out here, with the exception of the spot volatility index. And we'll spend a little time taking a look at that because today's close uh, should be very important. Right now, it's trading below its 50 day exponential moving average, but we'll go take a look at the, that. Right now, the Dow is up 183, SP is up 15. We're going to take a look at some short term time frame charts as well so you can see the patterns that are in play out here. We use the same patterns just for different time frames, and they provide us with different pieces of information out there but you know to get the play-by-play -play of what the markets want to do next well that for that play we've got to take a look at our short-term time frame so why don't we begin there let's begin by taking a look at the es mini just on a short-term basis and then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, switch gears and we'll move that to a longer term time frame but as we take a look at the es mini on a 30-minute time frame what we see out here is a roads momentum indicator topping signal it is in play as we speak just right now now, what sellers have the responsibility of doing when they get a topping signal, doesn't matter what pattern is you use. In this case here, it's just simply to push price back to support. This is the old tug of war. This is your football game. This is your offense, your defense out here. The defense, where's the defense at? Where are the safeties at? Right. That's all that we have to do now. And for those of you that don't understand football, and I'm not saying I understand football, but for those of you that don't understand those positions, we'll just simply apply that to our stock charts out here. Where's the defense? The defense out here is uh, in the 3369 and 3371 area. That is where they should be able to stand tall, stand strong out there and hold any decline lower. Why would Stevie say that? Well, if you take a look at that 30 minute profile, what you will see is that that, that center line is much closer to the bottom than it is to the top. Now, why is that important? Well, at the top are where the snipers are. Those are the sellers. At the bottom are where the buyers at. Now, the beauty of that center line is there's both buyers and sellers. So if that line is closer to the bottom, then we have a, 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 a larger group of buyers in between 3369 and 3371. Now, if price were to close below 3369, then where are the safeties? The safeties are the TD setup nine counts. That is where the breakout occurred. And the last breakout inside the ES Mini on a 30 minute basis was 3358.50, and there's one at 3359. Those are your strong supporters, or should be your strong supporters. That's what's going on if we just simply take a look at the short term time frame. If we now go ahead and we step it up, we take a look at the daily time frame out here. What we're going to see is today is going to be day number seven of a potential TD setup at nine count pattern. That's where in that nine count pattern we can see a in, a complete reversal. We can see just a little hiccup or we can see a sideways move out there. Now, somebody might say, geez, Louise, Steve, you could say that about any candle. 
yeah, you could. But the nines, it's all about the nines. And I was born on September 9th. So how would that be that, um, that the, the nines turn out to be such a good pattern out there? Well, they are. And uh, we pay attention. We can also see, just like on that 30-minute time frame, on the daily time frame, we've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. It's just a signal out here. Not confirmed. The 30 minute was confirmed. The daily, not confirmed. We would need some type of bearish reversal candle. We don't have that as we speak. You would also need to see a close below Stevie's green line, 3348. Many people will ask the question, and it's a valid question, when is a retracement just as a retracement out here? Well, that's the beauty of that green line, that oscillator and change line, because anytime price is just pulling back and testing that level, and by testing that level, what that means is that if price closes over it, what it tells you and I is we still have a rising price oscillator. And if Stevie's line is green versus red, which it's green right now, that says we have a rising price oscillator above zero. And those, my friends, are nothing more than very bullish market conditions. So as we speak right now, we've got the weatherman saying, hey, bring your umbrella. It's partly cloudy. But you know what that means for those people that like the cup half full. It's really partly sunny. I don't believe in partly cloudy. I only believe in sunny skies out there. That's the whole reason why I live in Florida. Well, that's not the reason, but it is a primary reason. How many days do we wake up to not having blue skies? It's basically a handful or two or when some type of big tropical storm is going through. Okay, so that was the S&P 500. No, we're not done taking a look at the S&P 500. If we go take a look at what's going on inside market profile land, well, we're not going to see much. But what we do see is the ES Mini is above its daily and its weekly, and you'll have to trust me on that. It's above its monthly and its quarterly. And quite frankly, it's above the 2019 high. Folks, closing high, uh, actually the high of 2019, period, those are full breakout mode conditions. Now, let's go take a look at that spot volatility index. That has been the big booger out here because it has been traveling above its 50-day exponential moving average. And when it's above that, it tells us about a lack of liquidity in the market, uh, a market that can be brittle because if there's a lack of liquidity, so to speak, I know that seems odd to you, you know, but, but, but it, it, that's how I interpret uh, the use of it. And, and if you use it, for a long period of time of I, as I uh, do it in, in the same way, you'll you'll get the same response. Now, the beauty is, is that when price is below the 50-day expansion moving average, what it's signaling to us is plenty of liquidity. Plenty of liquidity is the message as we speak at 1.13 in the afternoon. You'll want to watch that 14.40 level out there. And for those of you that are trying to short the market, if you see a close below 14.40, what this is really signaling to you is that the spot volatility index wants to move all the way back down to that lower bullish. Bollinger Band, that Bollinger, lower Bollinger Band, a different Bollinger Band than if you throw that up on your screen, you're going to typically see the, what is it, 20 and 2? I think that's the normal setting out there. 50 and 1 is the one that Steve uses when he's taking a look at that spot volatility index. I recommend that you do the same. You will find it is a useful tool out there. We talked yesterday about the S&P 500 equal weight and just simply the SPY, and that's the left-hand panel out here. And we had talked about how there was a divergence. Now, it's really close as we speak. This is going to be an end-of-day reading. The level to be watching, 118.40. The equal weight is trading at 118.51 right now. So you get a close above that 118.140 in the equal weight RSP. It is off to the races. We're getting these off-to-the-races messages inside the S&P 500. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we were going as we we're going to the break. We were taking a look at that equal weighted ETF RSP. That's the upper left hand corner. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, and uh, the equal weighted ETF tends to uh, be the real leading indicator. So when there's a divergence, which we were taking a look at yesterday, and there still could be by uh, day's end out here, because uh, we're taking a look. When I use this tool, I use this and I look at closing prices, and that's the reason why we're taking a look at line charts out there. But if it does close above the most recent high, so it's at a new all time. High. It's just confirming what we see in the weighted versions out there. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that I covered that um, you know, as we came back from the break. Let's go to one of our first questions out here, or in fact, this is our first question. This is coming in from Lee B. And Lee writes in, he wants to, well, let me see what you're actually writing. Any chance we can revisit WRTC? Absolutely. So our your request is Stevie's demand out here. So let's pull up WRTC. That's wrap technologies and get the uh, current analysis on it. So yeah, let's take a look at it. So as we take a look at RAP, just simply from a profile standpoint out here, Lee, we can see that uh, price is trading with inside its daily and its weekly out here. Uh, now the daily profile is bearish in structure. Bearish in structure because at 709 is the center. That's where there's both sellers and buyers. But notice at 735, those are sellers only. That's the seller's only club. And support is at 632. That is the bottom of the uh, box. So my experience is that when on a bear structured profile, and you can kind of see it out here in the way that it first behaved once it formed, that once you start getting below the center line of the box, it's telling you that sellers want to go ahead and push this price down to the bottom again. And what we saw was that center line price stop, that was uh, February 10th, just two days ago, as well as yesterday, that price really found its resistance level. So the sellers are really camped out here at that 709 area. Now you've also got resistance at 698 on the weekly time frame, so you got sellers on an intermediate term base that are sitting up there as well. So right now what this looks like is RAP Technologies wants to head down to the bottom of that profile, 632. If you're looking to get into this, and then we'll pull up my other chart, see if there's any other signals out there that say caution. But uh, right now it's just consolidated between 632 and 709. That's that's read. There's not enough data on the monthly time frame for us to be able to figure out anything else. Uh, if I pull over the daily chart out here, 
Daily chart shows roads went to indicator top. Okay, so in essence, it did its thing. What's its thing, Steve? Oh, well, remember, whenever you form a top, a valid topping pattern, valid because we had that bearish engulfing candle that formed on January 24th. So we got that pattern out there. What can sellers do? They push price down and they try to bust out support. Were they able to do that? No, they were not. If, Lee, and I'm not saying this is going to happen. In fact, there's no reason for me to say this is going to happen. But if, in fact, sellers were able to push through that 632 level, then you could be looking at a price point of 425. That's where price most recently broke out on a daily basis for a ticker symbol WRTC. But right now, we're going with just a simple good old-fashioned consolidation pattern, really in between 632 and 709. So I hope that that helps you out, Lee. Thanks so much. Oh, I'll share with you this, too. The weekly chart, um, let's just pull this over here. This also has a confirmed Rhodes Momentum Indicator top. So what's that say? You know, it says price uh, that sellers should try to push price down to Stevie's green line. That's at about the 622 area, 622, 632. So that's really where your support is on Wrap Technologies, Inc. That was for Lee. And uh, no other questions at this stage of the game. So let's just continue tooling around. Of course, you can reach out to us at 877-927-6648. Uh, what other things should we go look at? Let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. So we're now in day two above the advanced decline oscillator line. That is panel number two. Let me get to in the advanced decline line. Is that another new all-time high as we speak right now? That is bullish, not bearish. Markets do not end with the New York Stock Exchange um, uh, advanced decline line at new all-time highs. There was one example of it, one in the entire history of using the advanced decline line in New York Stock Exchange. So let's just say the probabilities are pretty slim out there. But what we were talking about was the advanced decline oscillator. That is the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average. And when that gets above that zero threshold level, that is also another signal. This is for the New York Stock Exchange that buyers are the ones in control of the market. And what this suggests to you and I is that advanced decline oscillator is likely moving up towards that 150 level. Clearing the 150 level, well, that just tells us that we've got higher prices coming at us into the future out there. We're not there yet, but right now what it is, it is bullish configuration. You get the combination of that advanced decline oscillator reading above zero and the spot volatility index below its 50-day exponential moving average. Again, that is 1440, and right now the spot volatility index is trading at 1422. This whole combination is a combination for prices to move higher. Now, you might ask that question, prices to move higher to where, Steve-O? Well, let's go take a look. Because we're above all profiles, because we're above everything, we're at new all-time highs, the only thing that Stevie can really come up with to help you identify, identify where price is likely headed to are horizontal trading rates. Now, this is a monthly time frame chart for the S&P 500. And what you have on here are daily, weekly, and monthly horizontal trading ranges. They're typically always going to be slightly different because we're always using the close or open of a bar. We don't really care about those extreme emotions. Extreme emotions are the wicks of those candles or the upper or lower shadows, whatever you like to refer to them as. And here we take a look at the horizontal trading range. And we're going to see that price we're trading at 33.71. At the 33.88 level is the next daily horizontal trading range. Could this be a place where we see a pause? We could. More likely than not, because of the setup, if we get that spot volatility to close below that 50-day combination of that and the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator above zero, really suggesting to and knowing that that Bollinger Band on that spot fix is relatively wow, wow look at that uh, wave in Portugal. Holy shnikes out there. That's a wave. In any event, um, uh, sorry, folks. Um, what the whole combination and setup here is more suggestive of uh, price headed up to its monthly horizontal trading range. That's at the 34.52 area, 34.51.78 to be exact, but we're not going to try to be exact out here. And I don't want to be exact. I'd love to be exact, but I can't be exact because that's crazy. But it looks like the S&P wants to move up into that 34.51-ish area over time. 
We had a request to go take a look at, let's see, Tucker said, oil and natural gas, if you have time. We're going to make time for you, Tucker. So in the case of uh, light sweet crude, let's do this here. Let's do this. Let's do this. What are we doing? Let's do this. Let's uh, let me get light sweet crude out here for you. And and what I'm putting up here is my composite contract, which is going to show us all different kinds of profiles, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Uh, and so just waiting for that to populate. While that's populating, Tucker, let's go take a look at what LightSweet Crude is doing. And as we see right now, what LightSweet Crude did several days ago, two, four, five days ago, was it confirmed a by the D point of the A to B equals CD pattern. And this was your 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD pattern. It did it with what? Why did Steve-O say it was confirmed? Because of the bullish engulfing candle that formed out there. And now, Tucker, prices trading above Stevie's red line. A close today above 50.61 says we go test at least the top of its daily profile. And you want to know where's the top of that daily profile. It's 53.86. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So uh, 
just to, to re-answer Tucker's question, we want to take a look at Lightsweet Crude, and we we're going to the breakout there. So here are the things that we know. When Lightsweet Crude topped, it was with wave number seven. That is letter G on my screen out here. From there, what Lightsweet Crude has done thus far, it made an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now, remember, these A to B equal CD pattern, the market is doing 75% of the work for us. It's a beautiful thing. It forms the A point, the B point, then the C point out there. All we have to do is just simply uh, know the rules, and the rules are that the C to D leg is equal to the A to B leg. Ah, hold on. That's only one portion of the rule. Just because price makes it to the D leg or equals that A to B leg on the way down, that doesn't mean that's the buy. No, 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 no. That's the way Stevie used to think about it. Many years ago, when I first learned that pattern, I don't want you to make the mistakes that I make. I'd like you to make newer mistakes and tell me how you resolve those and then get back to me so I can improve my trading as well. And what I found was that markets will just simply continue moving lower until we see the first sign of the bulls. How do we know what the first sign of the bulls looks like? That's the reason to go learn your P's and Q's or really your Japanese candlesticks out there. They are very helpful in identifying uh, where the buyers are coming in. They're especially helpful when we see them at the completion of a pattern. Stevie doesn't really give a whole lot of, uh, I don't care a whole lot about candle formations in the middles of, of a move. They're nice, they're interesting, or what have you, but they just don't have as much meaning, so I don't put a whole lot of mine time there, and not a lot, a lot of my time either. Now, in the case of Light Sweet Crew, Tucker, what it also created was not only that that A to B equals CD pattern to create a TD9 count. Remember, the bottom or the low of that TD9 count can occur on bar 8, 9, or the bar following 9. In this case here was a bar following 9. So we have two bottom signals. Now, what we've seen today so far, and price is above Stevie's red line, so that's positive. Because it says, okay, we have a rising price oscillator. It's still below zero, but at least it's rising. You want to see a rising price oscillator. Now, here's the problem. The bounce so far today ran into what sometimes can act as resistance, which is old support. And old support happens to be this TD setup line out here, Tucker. That's at 51.76. So what we really need to see for Lightsweet Crew to really confirm. Now, what I don't know is, you know, is this really acting as resistance? I do know it worked as support and Oftentimes, old support can be new resistance out here. And so until price clears 51.76, light sweet crude really isn't out of the woods, so to speak. But if it can get above 51.76, then we go take a look at our daily profiles. Now, on the daily profile for light sweet crude, what you're going to notice, let me just expand the chart. Let me turn off price because this is important to understand where light sweet crude is likely headed to. And that is we're going to turn off price. Why? Because now you can see the profile. In this profile here, what kind of structure is the current daily profile? Exactly. It is a bearish structured profile because the center line, which is at 52.85, is much closer to the top at 53.86. So even if Light Sweet Crude can clear the resistance level, old support, which is now resistance, that TD9 count line out there, then it still has a lot of work to do to the upside because sellers are sitting between 52.85 and 53.86. But more likely than not, that is where price is headed to. Now we'll turn price back on and then boom, voila. Uh, if we take a look at the other time frames out here, what we're going to notice is that what Light Sweet Crude also did when it was potentially bottoming, it's given, given us the bottom signals, was testing the bottom of that quarterly profile or close to it, which was 49.18. Did it get really all the way down there? No, it got down to 49.31. Is that close enough for us? It's close enough for me, at least. Uh, so that's what's going on when we take a look at light, sweet, crude. The other request was to take a look at uh, natural gas. Now, I don't think I've got natural gas set up with a composite symbol. I'd have to really make that. I haven't gotten around to it. I'll try. Nope. Well, it's not going to do that if I put in CNG, that's for sure. But I don't think I've got that. But we can still take a look at natural gas, Tucker, and we will. So let me see here. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Okay. Uh, Ixnay to that. Let me pull over the uh, uh, natural gas contract. Let's do it a couple of different ways out here. Let's see. Uh, here we got. Here we have natural gas. And so natural gas. It's interesting here. Right now it's trading out at 1.84, and at 1.842 is the gap on Sunday. It was really the low of Friday, but uh, when the markets opened up on Sunday. 
natural gas gap to the downside. And so what natural gas is trying to do right now is close, close that gap. That would be old resistance. So if, Tucker, you see a close above uh, 1.842 out there, that suggests to you and I that price will rise to about 1.908. 1908 would be the top of its box. Now, the center here is pretty much in the center. So in this case here, neither side, bulls or bears, have the advantage inside of the uh, profile out there. So watch that 1.842. If it closes below that, well, then it hasn't proven itself to you, uh, Tucker. Now, price was moving lower, doing less relative energy. No bullish reversal candle always makes me suspect. Doesn't mean that it can't bottom. But what it means is that our work is a little bit more difficult and we really have to assess uh, some of these other patterns that might be present in the marketplace, such as price bouncing into where it gap down on Sunday. So that's what I see when I take a look at natural gas and light sweet crude. I hope that that helps you out uh, with regard to what you might want to do. Fletch wants to take a look at um, IBB. So let's go take a look at the IBB. Fletch, anything specific that you need out there? Uh, I'm just trying to get things loaded up on my other systems out here. We'll switch over and take a look at the IBB. That is the biotech sector for the uh, NASDAQ. And uh, looking to go long, not in it. Okay, so if we take a look at it, what you've got here is you've got price that is trading above the top of its bearish structured daily profile. <clears throat> I always like to say nothing more bullish than a failed bearish pattern. Well, that's a failed bearish pattern because price sellers should have been able to have stopped price prices advance at 122.12. Hasn't occurred. The top of the weekly profile is 122.24. Price is above that. The top of the monthly profile is 120.70. Now, look. The week's not over. The month is clearly not over out here. But price is trading above some resistance levels. So that looks pretty uh, good to Steve-O. Today's going to be bar number eight. Uh, I was doing some uh, programming changes earlier, and my charts are kind of a little screwed up. Screwed up. It's not getting the current day's data in here. So I know that yesterday's bar was bar number seven. Seven. Was it bar number seven? Yeah, it was bar number seven. And today may be bar number eight. But I don't see any other real issues out here with regard to the IBB other than going all the way back to the high from December 25th. And so, Fletch, if price closes over that high, uh, that high, by the way, the price point there is, um, whoops, wrong thing, wrong thing, wrong thing, uh, 123.74. Where is the trade right now? 123.74. Above above 123.74, uh, who wanted this? Fletch doesn't look like it'll pull back. If you were looking for a pullback, if you were fortunate enough to get a pullback, where's your entry point into this? Well, Stevie's green line is 121.02. That would be an area to be looking for. We know that this TD9 count uh, uh, breakout level of 119.19 didn't hold. So even though it's extended out here, Fletch, we're not going to use that as an entry point. So it's either going to be 121.02 or the bottom of that daily profile, 116.22. That's what Stevie sees when he looks at the charts for the IBB for its daily time frame. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 214. S&P is up uh, 17. Let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Satish inside the Tiger's Den. Uh, Satish looking for an entry point into uh, Berkshire Hathaway, ticker symbol here that we're looking at, BRK.B out here. So, Satish, at this stage, just looking at market profiles, here's what we know. It's really a mixed bag. On a long-term basis, price is above the top of its monthly profile. That's 224.07. So that's in breakaway mode. The weekly, you've got a bear structured weekly profile. 228.39 is the top of that profile. Price hasn't really dipped much below the center line at 224.68. So this is just kind of, maybe it's building up some energy to take out that resistance level out here. And on the daily time frame, what you can see is a uh, daily bear structured profile. So your entry point, you're asking for an entry point. The entry point out here, profile-wise, likely about 226.36 to 224.68, the bottom of the daily or the center of the uh, weekly. Let's go see if there's anything to be cautious of inside of Berkshire Hathaway. Of course, there's always reasons to be cautious. But as we take a look, so price was moving higher, doing less relative energy, generated that Rhodes momentum indicator top on January 21st out here. Um, so that's that's and you've got this little bearish structure. So it does have some work cut out for itself to get above resistance. I don't have any other uh, entry point inside of Berkshire Hathaway uh, on this uh, chart, 209.72. But I'm not suggesting to you that price will get down to 209.72, 222.19, maybe, uh, but not uh, 209.72. At least not as we take a look at the charts presently. On a weekly basis out here, Berkshire Hathaway, and looking like much of the markets out here, uh, which is on a weekly basis, you've got a confirmed road momentum indicator top. Uh, but price is really trading right at uh, Stevie's green line and uh, was a and with inside the weekly profiles out here. So nothing has really cracked. Just simply at this stage here, we'll have to call it a pausing uh, situation. 
can we call it a pausing situation? That kind of sounds pretty weird, but that, hey, that uh, you know, get in line with it sounds pretty weird. On a monthly uh, basis, prices are moving higher, doing less relative energy, but that alone is not a reason to be too cautious. So Berkshire Hathaway, much like the rest of the markets out here, um, hard to find a uh, an entry point for you because the pullbacks or the entries are not too much below where things are trading as we speak right now. So Satish, I hope that that helped you out with regard to at least our analysis on Berkshire Hathaway. If you want in, maybe like the market, you're going to have to hold your nose and jump in the pool out there. If you're going to do that, just watch that spot volatility index. If it's trading below the 50-day exponential moving average, you know we've got a wide Bollinger Band out there, and you might be able to get some shekels off of uh, a move inside of Berkshire Hathaway. But, you know, we've got that resistance out there, so you've got to, maybe you could find a better instrument, so to speak. Let's go to our next question. I look to be lining up out here. M I K. Um, I believe it is not M I C K E Y, but it's just M I K. This one here for Hector and the fuel injectors, and he's bottom fishing here. So bottom fishing inside of uh, this instrument, what we'd really like to see is some kind of bottoming pattern for you. This is Michael Core's company out here. And as we take a look at it, let me try to expand the chart. Again, doesn't have today's data in here. Um, but and there is a bottom on the trading day of January 31st out here. So we know that. Um, let me come back over here now to my other charts and see where it's trading. So if you're bottom fishing here and that low has not been dealt with or taken out, that low, by the way, is, well, let's get that uh, data box over there so you can see it too. The low is 480. Now, the volume on that day was 4.7 million shares. Yesterday, 3.2. Today, you're at 1.4. So if you're bottom fishing and you want to take the trade, then go ahead and take it now. Take it now. Uh, know that the average true range, the last 10 days, the average price movement is 38 cents. Your stop must be 38 cents times one of the multipliers, 1.272 or 1.618, because you don't want to do anything average. If you do something average, you're just you're going to get poor results out here. And so we have to, we cannot put a stop so tight that it's within inside the average daily movement. I mean, put a gun to your head and pull the trigger if you're going to do that. Now, don't do that, but you know what I mean out there. So instead, you've got to have that wider stop. Does having a wider stop inhibit the success of the trade? No. All the wider stop does is just changes your position size. You see, what you're going to risk on a trade should have nothing to do with the stop. Risk is a whole separate calculation. Maybe risk is 1% of your working capital. Maybe you're using a trading system where you know what the percentage outcome is, and therefore you want to use 2%. And we say 1%. I don't care if your capital is a million, 10 million, or 100 bucks, or 1,000, or 10,000. It's just simply 1%. And on $10,000, 1% is what? 100 bucks. That's all you have to risk. Now, what do we mean by that? That means you take that 100 bucks, you divide it by the stop, in this case here, 38 cents times 1.618. I don't know what that is. I'll use 50 cents as the stop. So you take 100 divided by 50. That tells you you can buy 200 shares. Now, granted, 200 shares is going to be 200 shares times five bucks. Okay, that's not, yeah, yeah, you're going to need more capital. I'm talking about risk because you're going to have a OCO order in there. You're going to at least have a stop that's in place out there that says, if you touch that stop, I'm out of here. Now, maybe you want to have an end-of-day stop. That's fine. Just make sure that it closes out. I don't want you going through that gyration. Ah, oh, shoot, it's below my stop. Now what do I do? You knew what to do because before the trade, you set up those parameters. So if you want to take that trade, now would be the time. This is the best reward risk for you, Hector, and the fuel injectors on Michael Cores. The next question coming in from um, Dan, Dan the man, Levitan. He wants to take a look at uh, PEP earnings are tomorrow out here. This is PepsiCo. So, uh, do we have anything for PEP? And your question is you put a uh, bearish diagonal butterfly on it. Can you please show short term support resistance? Share your thoughts. So, let's take a look at this. <clears throat> you want to know where short term support is? Well, as we take a look at daily profiles, 
Weekly profiles, monthly profiles, Dan, prices above all those. This is suggesting this has got a free range to run to the upside. There's no resistance out here. As far as support, well, inside of PepsiCo, we'd have to say the top of its daily profile, 144.15, would be a level. The center could be 141.94. The bottom, 138.27, could be. I'm not saying that's where it is although those could be levels out here. But when you're above resistance, old resistance should become new support. The profile on the monthly is 140.45, the top, and 138.25 on the weekly. Are there any things here to suggest that PepsiCo is forming a top? And the answer there is, look, today's going to be or appears to be bar number eight of a TD setup nine count. Maybe today could be that high, but it could be tomorrow or it could be on Friday if that's a topping pattern. Price moving higher, doing less relative energy. I'd rather use that pattern to help you identify a top. In that case, you would need some type of bearish reversal candle. And you would also need to see price close below Stevie's green line. It's not. It's above it. 145.24. If anything, the signals here on the daily time frame are to be bullish, not bearish. And that's the same message. I see we're going to break on the daily, on the weekly, and the monthly as well. Steve Rhodes, be right back. Basil Chapman will be hosting a 90-minute live webinar for subscribers to his daily trading service, The Opening Call, Thursday, February 13th from 4 till 5.30 p.m. Basil will host his live webinar titled The Dark Cloud Cover, an Essential Market Analysis. In this 90-minute webinar, Basil will discuss the techniques he uses when identifying market downturns using his Chapman Wave, including how he uses specific ETFs like the SMH Semiconductor ETF as a canary in the coal mine leading indicator when looking for market downturns. By identifying particular weaknesses in the market technicals, Basil is able to identify the severity of the market reaction, and this is just one of many topics he'll be covering. To sign up now for the opening call, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't miss out on this special 90-minute live webinar with Basil Chapman, Thursday, February 13th. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. One of our listeners, Phil, writes in. He says he saw the TNP finished a uh, TD9 count and undercut a pivot by three cents three days ago. What do you think? When I take a look at TNP, 
out here. Let me put up the daily time frame chart. I don't know if that's what you're looking at. So I don't have a TD9 count from three days ago. What I do have, though, is a Rhodes Momentum Indicator uh, signal. Phil, so uh, what I'll do is I'll send this chart to you so you can take a look at the uh, nine count pattern that I've got out here and uh, compare that to what you've got. But more important than that, you're asking me, hey, what do I think? I love this as a, a trade here. What do we what does Stevie love about this? Number one, yesterday was the confirmation of that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. It formed that three river morning star pattern. It also confirmed it also was a uh, bull sash candle. And now today, what we love about this, Phil, is prices trading above Stevie's red line. That's the oscillator unchanged line. That's at 302, and it's now inside a bullish structured profile. So what you're looking for, the next move, if you are in this, I believe you're in this, um, is watch price. If you can get above 314, close above 314, not 315, not 316, I don't know what the number is, but, you know, above it. Uh, because it's a bull structured profile, then what buyers should be able to do is push price up to the next level of resistance. That's 353. Or that's 374. So a couple of folks were out there taking a look at trying to buy things that were moving higher, that were above profiles, looking for an entry point. I'm going to share with you that Phil here saved your day. Uh, Hector, you like to bottom fish out here. And we were taking a look at it. Remember the name of the symbol out here. I would rather see you bottom fish and take a trade in this because of its bottoming pattern. Not that that one that we looked at didn't have a bottom pattern. I believe it had a TD9 count there, and price had pulled back out here. But I like this setup a whole lot better. It doesn't mean that it's going to work, for goodness sakes. But for those of you looking for a trade, Dr. Phil is the one who provided this to you. So send him your royalty check. But right now, looks like if this can clear 314, 353 to 374 is in the bag. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. My favorite polar bear, David White, he's up next. After that, you got Tom O'Brien, and I'll be back with you on Thirsty Thursday, although I'm thinking Wednesday could be a little thirsty, too. Take care.